Hello my beautiful brothers and sisters and welcome to another channeled message reading and I am literally making this pretty much on the spot. Um, I just came out of a meditation and it was interesting because I was shown some pretty interesting things during this meditation. Now I don't know if it was me unlocking my clairvoyance because I don't really know how other people would describe clairvoyance as. Um, I would see it more as being able to see things that otherwise aren't there or just being able to tap into certain energies. Of course you have clairsentient which is this uh, um, feeling ability. You have clear audience, which is you're able to hear. You have clear cognizance, which is just intuitive knowing. So clairvoyance is one of those that I have been wanting to develop. And I, I think I'm starting to realize that I've always been clairvoyant. I just think that the way that I look at it might be different. Because I've always had visions via these images that will appear, but it really comes from me accessing my imagination but I am literally making this video like just as coming out of that out of that meditation and I felt the need to do this on the spot because I knew if I didn't do it on the spot I wasn't going to be able to convey to you what I saw and how I feel like it relates to the current energies now what I saw within this meditation was I found myself in this grassy field. Now, the grassy field that I'm looking at, I was drawing inspiration from a TV show that I really like called Steven Universe. So I was on top of this hill that was coming out of these grasslands and there were all kinds of different colors. It was mostly pinks and oranges, um, a little bit of gold and some green but it was mostly these softer colors. And I was on one hill, and I looked over and there was two other hills. On one of the hills was a version of me that was more, at least externally female, which I can say was probably my twin flame. And then on the other hill was a smaller version of me. And this version of me, it was a child, and they honestly, their color was a bit gray, almost like this was a, I'm not sure if this was my inner child or if this was some aspect of myself that needed further further development. But the energy and the feeling that I got for this child was that of, um, it was an anxious feeling that I got, almost like this kid was scared. But there was also this hint of bravery because this kid knew that it was involved in a very important ceremony within this vision. We were all standing on these hills. I'm not exactly sure how far they were apart. Maybe, maybe about 15 to 20 yards apart these hills were. But I was able to clearly see them. And there's a tree on each of these hills. And I... Uh, it panned into like an eagle's eye view and it was almost like we were sitting in this symbol that looked like an arrow that was pointing over and I was the arrow head all that like the point of the head and there were the other two points and it was interesting because if you had looked behind the hill that I was on it was almost like there was this like dome that's the only way I really can describe it, and it was darkness on the other side of the dome. But where we were, it was light and it was bright. Now, when it panned over to that dome, I did not get the sense that I needed to fear the darkness. I didn't get the sense that I needed to fear what was over there. I just got the sense that it was unknown. But it was almost like we were creating this arrow that was about to penetrate the barrier between where we were and this external reality or what we perceive as external. Like we're about to pierce the veil or pierce this bubble and we were involved in some type of ceremony. Now, I know that's a very interesting vision and the way that I relate this to what's happening right now is 
the fact that we do have Chiron, which is going into Pisces. In fact, it's, at the time of me making this, it's already in Pisces, at 29 degrees of Pisces. Chiron is known as the wounded healer in astrology. It's a centaur. It was a he's the Chiron was a great warrior who took friendly fire from someone on his side and went from being immortal to mortal. So Chiron represents this part in our chart where we feel like we've gotten the shaft from the universe. We feel like we've been dealt a bad hand. But Chiron used his experiences to travel around and to teach about how you can transmute these wounds and transmute that which we perceive as uh, traumatic, how we can transmute that into something that works for our favor. And if you look at anybody, really, in society that has some level of success or influence. You know, a lot of times when we when we idolize these individuals, we step into the middle of their story. We don't know what happened seven to eight to nine chin chapters before we came into their story. We only get that moment of them. And then we, if we follow that individual, we'll kind of see how they progress. But we don't really get that first part. A lot of these individuals that have some type of success or influence, regardless of how you define it, there are certain individuals in history that have stood out for a reason. And more than likely, it's because these individuals have gone through some very dark shit, but they learned how to transmute it. They learned how to accept the cards that were given to them and they learned how to play their hand because every single hand has a trump card. I'm going to say that again. Every single hand that the universe deals to us has a trump card. Chiron going into Pisces is this moment where we are really healing this alpha and omega vibration, this alpha and omega energy. Aries being the first sign of the zodiac, cardinal fire, initiation, personality, the ego, acting one thinks, impulse, oftentimes acting first, think later, which sometimes is good, but sometimes it's not so great. And then Pisces, imagination, dreams, illusions, delusions, prisons, drugs, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. But the wounded healer coming over the spot is allowing us to heal these aspects of ourselves. Because a lot of times these dreams, these delusions, these illusions, these things that we want to aspire to become and we believe that we are, and uh, how they translate into our ego, our personality, and our actions needs to be healed. The last time Chiron was here was in the late 60s. What well, was going on during the late 60s? Civil rights. JFK was assassinated, MLK was assassinated, the space race, and Chiron won't be back at the spot for another, what? It's going to be a while before it's here again, another 80 or so years. So this is a very unique opportunity for us to heal not only our persona and who we see ourselves are and our individuality because a lot of people think that we need to get rid of the ego i say we are here to evolve the ego to evolve it into a higher vibration that's what i feel because yes sometimes ego can hold us back from this spiritual development but the ego also saves our ass sometimes it really does and you also have to think about it, that for the most part, the hardware of the human body has not changed for thousands of years. The software, the energy that we're exposed to, that we are taking in and absorbing these cosmic energies, that is being uploaded. But this is like essentially putting the information and the capabilities that a iPhone, like the newest iPhone has on today, on the oldest computer. 
Like that's what's happening. That's why so many people right now are short circuiting. It's because we have this very high vibrational energy that is trying to interface with this body or this hardware that is that was originally wired for the old software. <laughs> Just pause for a moment, because I even even I had to think about that. I think what gives me a rather unique insight into this transit is because I have my natal moon at 28 degrees of Pisces. Not only that, but it's in the fourth house. So Chiron has already gone, gone over this spot. Now, I love my moon in Pisces, but after I got a reading from, I, I got a reading from the Peace Dealer actually, he said that my Pisces moon is a troll. And I definitely believe that. Now, I love my Pisces moon because it does allow me to tap into these higher vibrational energies. But a lot of the times, I can't interface it. Not a lot of the times, but there are some times where I can't interface the information fluidly, and then it overloads me, which results in some type of anxiety or some paranoia. That's usually what happens with me. So it's like I will trip myself out because I'm taking in this higher vibrational energy. And even lower vibrational energy too, because like the, the flip side of Pisces is getting caught up in your illusions and your delusions, right? But it's also about belief consciousness. It's also about this connection to spirit and this connection to source. So I love my Pisces moon, but the fact that Chiron is going over this spot, and like I said, it's in my fourth house, which has to do with family, foundation, ancestors, and also this portal to the divine. I know that me personally, I'm going through a very deep soul transformation a very deep soul transformation and it has not been easy there have been moments where i've had great great elation epiphanies and just the highest vibration and there have been other moments where i just somehow put myself into the spot of just this deep despair but i'm actually here and this transit is teaching me how to transmute that space and to see the beauty in those areas so, this is a moment where we are healing our connection to the divine. And the interesting thing is because if you think about it, if Aries represents the personality, the ego, and character, and many times a lot of people identify themselves with that area. People think that the, people think that the way to spirit is through, and it's funny because spirit's through all of it, but if you think about the first six signs of the zodiac, as being more of the human side of the zodiac, and this, uh, the second six signs of the zodiac, as being more of the spiritual realm, people think that they have to get all the way into Libra before they can access the divine. But all they have to do is take a step backwards, and it's not really taking a step backwards, it's an illusion, but all they have to do is open the back door in many ways, and then spirit is knocking right there. But a lot of times, you don't want to open up the back door. Because Pisces is right there, right? We're afraid of what's back there. And it's not necessarily about looking into the past or anything like that. It's just this beautiful cycle of transformation. This Chiron and Pisces is really going to allow us in a great way to heal our connection to spirit and to source. And to take that connection and act on it in a way that is hopefully and I say hopefully because not everyone's going to act on it in this way but hopefully for a great majority of us we act on it in a way that is empowering that is motivating inspiring and uplifting sense in a way that we encourage other people to be unapologetically and authentically themselves we also have to think that this whole transit right now, we have Chiron at the at the edge of Pisces, and we still have Uranus, which has yet to ingress back into Aries, but it will. These energies have been semi-sextiling each other for a while now. A semi-sextile is when planets 
planets are about 30 degrees apart from each other. It's like a minor positive aspect. It's sort of, I like to think of the semi-sextile as the love at first sight energy because while personally I don't necessarily believe in love at first sight, I do believe in like this, like this little spark that we might confuse as the love at first sight. But that's what the semi-sextile is. It's like this little like spark and you're like, ooh, what is that? That's interesting. So we got to think about this. With Chiron ingressing back into Pisces and then Uranus, the planet of people, rebellion, technology, in, uh, innovation, uh, information as well, electricity, going back into Aries, we are really honestly not done downloading these higher frequencies and future frequencies because I like to think of Aquarius and Uranus as a time traveler. We still have to download these into our persona so that by the time these energies both come forward, we'll be able to really act in a new way that represents our bridge and our connection to spirit and source. I think that's all I really have for you, actually. I thought this was going to be a longer transmission, but I guess not. I'm not sure if I'll make another video later, but I really just wanted to channel that for you all and let you all know what I was feeling and how these energies are affecting us. Of course, like I said, it's affecting everyone differently. As I said, this is my fourth house, so I know it's definitely having to do with my family, my foundation, my emotions, uh, ancestors, past. And you know, for you, this could be somewhere else. So, and if you don't know where uh, where this is happening, I can help you out with that. You can get in touch with me via email, which will be one Aquarian at seven at gmail.com. We can schedule a reading, or you can get in touch with me via my website. The link will be in the description below. And I can inform you how this Chiron and Pisces transit will be affecting you, because. This is an opportunity for us to unlock these incredible superpowers and these incredible divine gifts that we are all endowed with, but we have to, it, this is really a self-initiation almost. It's like you have to be initiated, but you have to decide to be initiated. That's what this is about. So thank you so much for joining me on this video. If you liked it, please like <laughs> share and subscribe i would really appreciate it give me a thumbs up and if you would like a personal reading with me beloved like i said before you can follow the link in the description below too the aquarianadepts.com and always remember my beautiful 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 brothers and sisters to keep moving forward to stay focused stand yahoo smile often <laughs>